Hey guys, Coach Arnie here. I want to take a few minutes today and go over a review of where I'm at with my on my journey to my R5 at 65, which is going to happen at the end of this year, 2024, as I turn 65. And just for a quick review, I had my first R3 of the year uh, on Jan the weekend of January the 13th. Uh, that was a winter adventure, and it ended up being um, a little short of my goal, only because of the snow on the North Rim. So, but going forward, the journey continues as I've got planned now, or am planning, uh, at least two more, maybe three more R3s on my journey. Um, but um, in the meantime, with my unique training style... Strength, building strength is still the number one priority that is going to help me to have a better adventure. Why? Well, at 65, uh, and as we get older, strength is super important. I mean, endurance is important too, and that's why we have to be very specific. And I also have to include lots of training in what I'm doing, and I'll explain that as we go here. But building strength, especially can what I call canyon specific strength is super important and that's what I coach a lot of the individuals that I work with on not that they're doing the Grand Canyon but whatever their Grand Canyon might be it may be pickleball or it may be hiking or it may be playing with their grandkids or just being able to get off off the ground or prevent falls for many people those things are the Grand Canyon. And so you have to be very specific on the exercise that we do. And I am very specific with the movements that I do for the Grand Canyon because most of the things that I hear from people are things that I've experienced, like the big downhill, seven miles if you're on South Kaibab or almost 10 miles on Bright Angel, even though the last three aren't as rugged as the first seven on either trail. But if you're not ready for that kind of an impact on your body, you're gonna be wrecked by the time you get down to Phantom Ranch. So we train for that. I have to train for that. And an R5 means I'm gonna be doing that two times versus just one time. And that means twice on the North Rim coming down that five and a half miles from the top in the North Rim down to Manzanita, you know, That'll wreck you if you're not ready for it. So sp building specific strength. And I know it sounds crazy, but being an old strength athlete, I have figured that out. And I enjoy strength training, which gives me an advantage because I also enjoy hiking. I'm not a big runner anymore, but I enjoy hiking. And I have a rule that my coach has taught me. Run when I want walk when I want because when I have to run I'm in trouble when I have to walk I'm in bigger trouble so now the next thing is nutrition and I've talked a little bit about that as we've gone along I'm going to be building that more into the program here because when you're dealing with events that are over 50 miles and over 24 hours nutrition plays a big part and being that I'm a fat adapted athlete means that I have two different fuel tanks the normal sugar fuel tank, which most people utilize by taking in a lot of high carbohydrate fuel sources on their, whatever they're doing, a marathon, ultra marathon, doesn't matter. But most people will eat, will be eating a lot of food. I don't. Even on my last, well, my last two Canyon adventures, I've been practicing hardly eating anything using a lot of um keto supplements and I'm still doing that because one it saves my gut from having to overwork I can use that energy for what I'm doing and I train that way I'll do six seven eight hours on a training uh, hike or run with no food at all no food at all except a keto source um, and we'll go into more specifics on that too but utilizing fat for energy utilizing fat for energy is critical along with the water and the salt and all the things that I use as well but um, that's a big part of this and then my nutrition to get 
to get to that place. You know, I'm a very meat-based athlete, so I do include some carbohydrates in my diet, mainly from sweet potatoes and, and whatnot. But for the most part, I'm eating a lot of red meat and eggs and some dairy with cottage cheese and sprinkling in there every once in a while some other um, carbohydrate sources. But for the most part, 80% of what I'm taking in is meat and fat. So that's a big part of my training, especially at 65. Is this what you would uh, benefit from at 30? I don't know. We'd have to look at that. Same with the exercises. What are the best exercises for you at your age? I don't know, but I know for 50, 60 and older athletes, what I'm doing can be very beneficial, which is why I am documenting it on this video. And then the last, the last thing that I've got to work on is my planning for my R5. You know, this time around, this is my second R5, I'm going to use people. I didn't do that the first time. And the reason was I didn't want to have to worry about anything. I didn't want to have to worry about anybody except for me. And that worked really well, except I could have used some help. It would have made some things a little easier. It would have allowed me to get a little bit of rest at a critical point. But that's okay. I learned from it. So this time, as I plan, because now it's early February, uh, I've got to find people, one, that I could trust and two, that I could also rely on to do certain critical things that could help me, even, even hiking with me at certain critical points in the journey, in the adventure, because we're talking about doing two back-to-back R3s in the Grand Canyon, and the way that I'm probably going to do it, it's going to be closer to 100 miles when we're all done. So, so let's review. The first thing is planning my next R3, which is probably going to be somewhere in April, let's say. So that's the first thing I have to worry about. What's that going to be like in the canyon because of the fact that weather in April can be crazy, but I've got a plan to get in the canyon and get some work done, okay? Because whatever I can do in the canyon, I'm pretty sure I can double it. And that's the whole idea with the R5. Number two is building that specific strength, which I need to do. That's number two. And number three, keep nailing, keep working on that nutrition, keep that nutrition plan. It's always, it, I'm always working on it every weekend, constantly working on it. Also my overall diet, which helps me to stay in shape and stay healthy. Here's a key point here for number three. The healthier I am, the better chance I have to, of having a successful R5. So I've got to stay healthy. And then the fourth thing is planning the R5, finding the right people, using whatever help I can find as far as the, the person or whatever who's going to be a part of this. And then I've also got to be aware of the weather. Yes, the weather, because when I make these plans, when I involve other people, the weather is going to make a big, uh, it's going to have a big impact here. You know, especially when I'm doing this in probably late October, early November. And I'm going to try to do the best I can to schedule around any potential weather problems. So there you go. That's Coach Arnie's plan for his R5 at 65. And as we go forward here, I will be doing weekly videos on my training my hiking, and my R3 adventures. So stay tuned. Hopefully, we can all learn from this together. And uh, I can help other people that want to experience, have a crazy experience in their life as well. And um, so there you go. I love you guys. I love that you're on this journey with me. And we're going to have a heck of a year because an R5 at 65 is going to be a big deal for not just me, but for a lot of people that want to start doing big things in their life in their 50s, 60s, and beyond. I love you guys. Talk to you later.